Okay guys, so following on from the first lesson that I've done today, um, which was how to make a composition. Now that we have the composition made, I'm going to show you how to bring things onto the timeline, how to manipulate them, how to uh, start playing around with the basic different types of things. So as you can see here, I've made um, a quick text. So I have two shape layers, which are these two lines here, and two pieces of text, which are 1080 and 1920. Again, this is just to kind of show you um, exactly what I meant earlier. So by 1920 by 1080. So this width here is 19... 1020 pixels and this height up here is 1080 pixels if we go to composition settings we'll see that's still there another thing you can do in here is change your duration so as we saw from the technique I showed you earlier you can make a timeline exactly the length of uh, something that you would like to do but if you would like to extend it you can always go to up here change the duration to like three minutes hit OK and then this down here scrubs and zooms your timeline. So um, if I move this all the way to the left, you can see now we have lots of empty space here because we've added an extra minute's worth of time. Obviously our footage only lasts this long. And the same with all these. Because these are share players and numbers, we can extend them infinitely. So you would do that by uh, just grabbing either side and same on this side, we can drag them off. And you'll see that the way a timeline works is that when something is in solid color, it will appear and it will appear top down uh, exactly as in Photoshop. So you will see the things on top. So we have our two shape layers, which are this and this. If I hit this little solo button, I can see these by themselves. So we have these two. And then if I hit that, we have our text and that. So these are the four layers I have on top of my video and that's why they're showing up. If I move the video above them all, we would see the video top and nothing underneath because the video is covering them all. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. So now, um, now that I've illustrated those points, I am just going to hide these by clicking on the eye icon here. So even though they're here, um, they're temporarily off until I make them visible again. So this is like if you've got something on here that you're not quite sure about, you can always turn it on. Neil approves. So there we go. Um, so let's have a look at bringing in some more footage now. So we have our base clip here with Neil DJing. And we have this photo of Scott. So let's bring that in. So as you can see, I've dropped this in. And at the moment, it seems nicely kind of centered but if we come into here we'll see that it's way bigger than our composition and if you look here there's a lot more information but by default everything that comes into the uh, the timeline is at scale 100 uh, which means that it's as big as you can make it without it starting to become blocky so to do this uh, to have a look at these pieces of information I'm gonna click on this little twirl arrow and you'll see there's a transform menu now every item that you bring in from here that is a picture or a video will have this transform menu and what we're going to have a look at today is the basic parameters so by default i've brought it in and it's coming i'm just going to delete that just do that again so i'm literally just going to drag it um, on here above my footage now if i twirl this down these are the defaults it's going to come at so it's going to come at in the middle of uh, the composition it's going to come at scale 100 like i said and um, what i'm going to do is change our scale here to 100 so this is the actual size of my video which is uh, it's kind of important to know it's quite big fortunately i have a big screen here so i can just about stretch my window so i can see it all but as you can see here if i move past 100 we're going to start to see like blockiness and horrible so what it does is it looks when you bring something in it will bring it at the maximum size obviously I can go the other way and scale this down now because as we can see from the footage here um, it's absolutely huge compared to my canvas which is cool because it means I can do some these kind of like scaling effects and that kind of stuff and we you know we, we wouldn't lose quality up until this reaches a hundred percent so at the maximum size I can make it this big and uh, that's kind of useful to know. If you hold spacebar, you can move around this window, especially like say you're like really zoomed in. 
you can move around the window just like uh, Photoshop and same in the timeline if you have um, let's say I'm zoomed in here so the further right you go down in the corner the more you zoom on your timeline I can move left and right across my timeline I can also do this this here kind of scales my timeline as well as you can see it's moving at the same time as my bar but I can then also move this left and right if I wanted to move around so lots of ways to move around the timeline now let's have a look at some of these other um, parameters here so we have scale we've seen what that does that scales things up and down we have rotation which as you would expect allows you to do things like this uh, hit ctrl z to undo we have opacity which is how um, transparent the layer is so by default when a layer comes in it's fully opaque but if you bring this down the closer you bring it down to zero the more transparent your layer is going to be which is uh, quite interesting to note and and that's it we have the anchor point which uh, is kind of a bit harder to explain but I'm going to do my best so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down and I'm going to move my anchor point by doing this so as you can see here this little cross is the anchor point on your picture so if I then move this position back but rotate you will see it will rotate around here rather than the middle of the image so um, and if I come to do a scale exactly the same it will scale from that point so that's why the anchor point is important I hope that makes sense um, so yeah so we've brought in that if we bring in some more footage let's bring in uh, this little video now this is interesting because if I bring this in you'll see the problem is that this piece of footage is very short as you can see here it lasts uh, I think we were saying six seconds um, and as we can see it's not big enough to fill the timeline because it's 720 by 576 and we know that our composition if you hit ctrl k is 1920 so um, you can understand why this looks small even though if we twirl down here it's, it is at 100 percent but it's just not big enough a piece of footage so i could scale it up and you know with these kind of like old pieces of film you wouldn't really notice a difference because they look kind of crappy anyway um, but you know that's the thing to kind of like be aware of is make sure your footage is big enough for your menu um, and as you can see this kind of like finishes after I'm going to zoom in here uh, six seconds what I can do is I can go to layer edit duplicate make another instance move this across and if I zoom in I'm using the plus arrows this time uh, and line this up I can get it to kind of loop so as we can see here the problem with the end of this piece of footage is that uh, it disappears here like okay there's still some noise going on but like we're not seeing anything so what I can do is bring the end point here because after this we're not going to see anything anyway so there's no point in us seeing just like black frames so if we come to that and now if I bring this across I can get this to loop so I can get that to come to 2 and then go back to 8 and so on and so forth and obviously we can have the same problem here so let's just uh, find that last frame which is here move the points across until and then there we come out straight to our footage so that's kind of useful and um, that's how you would make a piece of footage loop there is an easy way to do this though if you right click go to interpret footage go to main down here you can set how many times a piece of footage loops and this is a godsend so if I change this to 10 keep an eye down here can you see we've suddenly got so many more frames to play with and now instead of duplicating it eight times I can just get it to kind of loop 10 times which is really useful because it saves you having to stack a layer millions of times um, and yeah that pretty much uh, you know uh, finishes bringing footage onto the timeline as for the other features of the timeline we're going to go through those in another lesson but those are the basic parameters you get with every piece of footage how to bring footage onto the timeline how to scale it how to move it around you can drag it around here and yeah, I think that covers it for today's tutorials. I'll see you in the next one.